Hi, good evening everyone. This is Virginia State Senator Amanda Chase seeking the Republican nomination for governor and welcome to tonight's State of the Commonwealth address. Um, this is just an opportunity to give you an update of important news events that have gone on during the week. Um, the first thing that I want to talk about is something that's coming up this weekend. Um, you will actually find the governing board of the Republican Party. The uh, State Central Committee is actually meeting this coming Saturday to determine whether the election for governor will be by primary or by convention. Um, as many of you all know, when I first announced almost nine months ago on President's Day that I would fully seek the Republican nomination in a primary not a convention. Why is that? I believe conventions have historically disenfranchised candidates and voters. Unfortunately, the hard cold facts are this, that we have had numerous conservative candidates that basically had shenanigans within the pay to play Republican establishment elite in which we had candidates who were disenfranchised like Bob Marshall when he ran for U.S. Senate, uh, like Susan Stimson when she ran for Lieutenant Governor. And I wanna make sure that the people's votes and their voice is heard. And um, so I wanna just be very upfront with you that I am fully a Republican. Um, I have the highest score in the Senate of Virginia um, as given by the Virginia Tea Party and even the General Assembly itself. Um, I am fully a Republican and I work to get numerous Republican candidates elected, but I do not believe that the convention is the best method of nomination for a number of reasons. Uh, number one, there is a, it's a, once again, part of a pay to play system. In order to vote, you have to pay to be a delegate. You have to a file a filing fee. Um, I don't think you should have to be able to pay to vote. Uh, many of you all who participated in the 7th Congressional District Convention um, or the 5th District Convention, um, I can only speak to the 7th con uh, con con uh, Congressional District Convention in which Nick Freitas uh, was elected, and, and I'm thankful he won and happy to support him. Um, but here's my point. It took about 12 hours of folks sitting out in 104-degree heat index. And, um, you know, people who are first time uh, voting and serving as delegates in a convention for the first time, that's just not a good way to introduce them to the Republican Party of Virginia. Unfortunately, many of our conventions are very contentious. And um, I've seen that in numerous races over the years since I've been involved with the Republican Party. Um, I've seen a lot of shenanigans uh, since I've been a part of that, and I just don't think there's any place for that. I would also tell you there's a huge expense that's involved in, in renting out a place that's large enough to hold all of the people who should and want to participate in a convention. Um, every time that we've had a statewide convention that I can ever remember, we've always had to rent out the Greater Convention Center. Um, and, and everyone spent the day there. Many people had hotel expenses because they were coming from out of state. Um, it is expensive to have conventions. And um, also, I think it disenfranchises those who are in the military. You have to jump through extra hoops um, in order to be a delegate at a convention if you're a member of, of the, the military. Um, I think primaries get more people involved in the process. And this whole idea about Democrats getting involved in our, in our nomination process for conventions, I can say this. You can have Democrats that sign up to be convention delegates. It does not keep them from participating in our elections. I think that we should make our elections for our Republican candidates accessible to those who don't want to spend 12 hours voting. Um, many of us work for a living. Many of us have children, young children. Uh, we can't escape from our lives from, for 12 hours to participate in the voting process for Republicans. So for this and for many other reasons, I have said I will only seek the Republican nomination in a primary. That decision is gonna be made by the 
a state central committee this coming Saturday. So um, that is coming up this week. If you're a member of state central, I encourage you to, uh, to vote for and support a primary. Uh, the next thing that I want to talk about in general, because I know it's on everybody's minds, and, and that is still the 2020 presidential elections. And many of you all, like myself, we have been uh, following um, alternative media sites because the mainstream media will not cover anything other than their propaganda that they, that they want to put out there. So we've had to go to alternative sites, and I've, I've done my reading, I've uh, watched videos, and um, what I will tell you is this, is that I too, like many of you, believe that there needs to be an investigation here in Virginia. The good news is that, from my understanding, attorney Sidney Powell, who has filed a number of cases in Pennsylvania, Arizona, um, Georgia here recently, and she is coming to Virginia um, at the end of this week, and she said that she is going to help us here in Virginia, and um, she has been uh, really front and center as the attorney, along with um, some other attorneys that are out there, uh, but she, in my opinion, has, has really led the way. Um, in exposing this whole uh, system with the Dominion voting systems. And um, I actually spoke to her briefly uh, right before she headed to Georgia, and she indicated that she was going to take care of the big seven most highly contentious states in order to help President Trump uh, before coming to Virginia. So um, that's all going to play out this week. Um, I will be on WRVA tomorrow morning at 7.35 a.m. with John Reed. I look forward to that. And uh, we are going to discuss some more of the specifics about um, allegations that have been made. But I do want to highlight a couple of things that I've heard from folks. Um, many of you have reached out to me, and I want you to continue to do that. Um, but one of the things that Sidney Powell has asked me to do is to get you all who have seen something to put it in an affidavit, a signed affidavit. You can email it to my Senate district. It's district11 at senate.virginia.gov. And we're going to put that at the top here for you to see that. But um, please send your signed affidavits uh, to my office so that we can forward those on to Sydney. We've seen... Um, instances of concerns in Hopewell, in Chesterfield, Henrico, Lynchburg, and the list goes on. So um, that's very important. The, the final thing that I want to talk about is something that Governor Northam mentioned today, legalizing marijuana in Virginia. And let me just be very clear on my position. Absolutely not. Um, I do not believe it's in the best interest of Virginia, its public safety, and its health, and the kids to legalize marijuana. And you know, I'm going to speak right now as a mother of four grown children. Um, I have never seen a study out there that show that kids do better in school when they're surrounded, when they smoke marijuana, or they're, they um, are in that environment. And, and he is saying that it's only going to be legal for adults to have to have marijuana give me a break i don't believe that for a minute and neither do many of you out there um i don't believe this is going to help us at all as we see um, an increased risk of of people who are who are driving who are under the influence and we don't even have measures for law enforcement to, to measure intoxication for that. So there, there's a number of things um, that need to go into play here, but I think it ad adversely affects our public safety and our kids. And for that reason alone, I'm out. I don't care how much this is going to bring in, in revenues. And they're saying $274 million a year will be brought in in state taxes. Well, guess what? Let's talk about the cost. Of, of sending kids into rehab um, who get addicted. Um, I think it's completely uh, wrong 
on many levels. They're saying that they're gonna, the higher the level of THC, the higher the tax. I mean, you can't make this up. Um, it outlines options for licensing and taxing the marijuana industry. Listen, just because you can make money at something doesn't mean that it's good for the people of Virginia. And I have voted always against legalizing marijuana here in Virginia. Uh, what I have said is that if we have cannabidiol oils that don't have the THC in it, I have voted for that to help chronic pain sufferers and those with seizures. Um, you can get that through a, um, it's, it's pharmacy board regulated and uh, we don't have to worry about it getting into the wrong hands. It's gotta be, in my opinion, pharmacy board regulated. Yes, we need to do more to help those who are suffering from chronic pain and those types of things, but to completely legalize adult marijuana, I think is very, very misguided and, and something that I would not support. So thank you all for tuning in for tonight's State of the Commonwealth Address. I will be here each and every Monday night at 7.30 p.m. to um, address your concerns. Feel free to write into my office. Again, it's district11 at senate.virginia.gov. Um, let me know that, that the issues that are important to you. We read those every week, and um, I want to make sure that I'm addressing those on here as well. Thanks everyone. Good night and God bless you.